Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Thank you for joining me in the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. In the last video, I covered our Amazon Bedrock Analytics Connectors. And in this video, I'm going to cover our new Layout Container Object. Before we continue, please be sure to visit the Click Learning Portal at learning.click.com for all your personalized and structured learning needs of what Click has to offer. Here you can select from both free and subscription-based content, instructor-led training, skills assessments, and robust video tutorials. Check out the video tour on the main page to get started. Okay, so let's jump right in. First thing I'd like to state is that I did not use any custom themes to create this. I just used the styling panels and the properties for the different elements that I have available to me. So let's go right in and use this. I'm going to select my sheets. We'll go to a blank sheet that I have set up already. Edit the sheet. And you will notice that the layout container object is part of the custom objects asset. And it's underneath the click dashboard bundle. Now you can use this any which way you want. I choose to use it as a full sheet object and then place my objects inside. Now you can add content with this quick button, but the majority of the time you're going to be adding content using the properties panel and clicking this add button here. And the content that you can add are existing master visualizations that you might have saved or content created from scratch directly from your chart objects. Okay, so let's style the layout container. So I'm going to grab the grab handles here and resize it to the full height and width of the sheet. Now you'll notice that I have presentation properties for the layout container. We're pretty much going to be messing with styling and then you'll notice you'll have keep charts within bounds and show grid lines and I'll talk about those in a few moments. First thing I want to do is add a piece of content. Now when you add content, you must use this quick button here to add your first piece of content or the content property add button here to add additional pieces of content. You might think that you can like drag and drop an item from your master visualizations or from your charts, but you can't. If you do that and you drop it, it's basically going to replace the layout container with that chart asset. And if you happen to do that, just make sure to use your undo button. So let's go back and just add a quick piece of content here. I'm going to search for my uh, gross sales KPI. And now you can see how the content is added and the layout container is going to have like a, a pale light green background when it's active. So now I can freely move that piece of content around. Now notice I'm going to try to move all the way past the boundary and there it goes, right? I can kind of hide a piece of it if I wanted to. That's where you can choose properties for appearance for the layout container and select keep chart within bounds. If you do that, and then when you select that object, you can't go past the boundaries of the layout container. Okay. There might be some specific use cases where you'll want to do that with overlapping or stacking when you're using multiple layout containers, basically to combine objects, etc. But that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you want a little bit more visual reference for alignment, you have the ability to show grid lines. And then you also have the ability to snap to grid. But what's the fun of that? Because I can kind of do that with the original sheet layout. I like the ability to freely move this around wherever I want, but you can use the grid lines for alignment purposes if you wish. Now back to styling, you have your typical title, subtitle, font styles and colors, but then you can also choose the background color of the layout container. If you want to have an image there, a border, corner radius, and shadow. So I'm not going to use a background image here. I'm going to use a uh, background color and we're just going to make it black because I want to go kind of like a dark mode. And then I want to make this object have a white corner radius with a different color border. And we're going to touch that in a moment, but let's finish styling the layout container. And the reason I'm bringing this up to you also, right? This is all about do more with click tips and tricks. A little bit of a learning curve. You have to be aware of what objects you're accessing. Even though my object is selected, notice that I'm still in the layout container styling. 
So I don't want you to get confused if you start making changes here and then all of a sudden you don't see your object updating. That's because you're still in the properties. So a good trick here is when you want to style a particular object, right click on the object and then choose edit properties. And then the properties panel will open for that property. Now, if it's a master visualization, you'll have to edit in place or you can right click on your master visualization and choose unlink visualization. And then when you select edit properties, you'll have your full property list. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. These are those tips and tricks I'm mentioning, some of the nuances to be aware of. All right, so going back to the layout container, styling of the layout container, we chose the background color of black and the border in this case here, just so it's visible for the video, I'm gonna make the border about uh, 10 pixels and we're gonna make it color red. And then we're gonna do about an 18 pixel corner radius. And then for drop shadow, we're going to do a medium drop shadow and make that shadow yellow. And if I just resize this a little, you can kind of see it's taking shape. You go into analysis mode. There's my container. Okay. So now I want to style the object inside the container. So I'm going to choose the object, right click, edit properties, and then go to styling. And then I have the same options here. Here I'm going to do a large shadow and we're going to use white and let's say at a border. So we'll do a border about eight pixels and then just choose blue and we'll add a corner radius of about 10 pixels. It'll give us a nice rounded edge on the corner and there's our object. I'm just going to resize it, position accordingly. Okay, so now I'm going to add another object and in our master items, this time I'm going to add our total orders object simply by selecting it. And I'll size that accordingly. And now you can see the object is on top of gross sales. If I wanted it to go behind, I could select either or and right click reorder chart layers and say bring forward. Select the chart reorder chart layers, bring to front, send backwards, send backward, etc. And I could adjust the chart layers just like that. Fairly simple. You'll notice that you'll have an extra menu, see container options. These are additional properties that you can do for the charts that are in the layout container. Okay, so let's add a fresh chart here. We're going to look for a, a line chart. edit the properties of the line chart, go to data, and the dimension here is going to be order date. And the measure here is going to be total price. And we'll just sum total price. Now, depending on the theme that you might have selected, like the basic themes that are inside this area here, here I'm just using Sense Classic, you might get a transparent background. Um, if you do, you can just set the property within the appearance. And then under styling for a single color background, I'll just select white for now. So now with this particular chart, you'll see we have this white space right here. We can create like a composite KPI, if you wish, simply by arranging and reordering the chart layer and then putting it right on top and sizing accordingly. And then you can group both of these by holding your left mouse button and selecting both objects and now they will be together. And you'll notice that there's also alignment guides might be a little bit difficult to see with the grid on, but you can see that red line that will connect these two to show the different alignment options as such. And you can resize them accordingly. Okay, so that's about it. There's really nothing to it. Um, what I'll do here is let's just go back to the sheet that I created earlier and all the objects are completely interactive. You still have the complete associative experience. 
Um, here I have actually another layout container with just filter objects. So just selecting, for example, year, we're going to look at all open orders that are arcade sticks from the United States, and you can see everything interacts appropriately. All right, guys, so I'm looking forward to seeing what awesome dashboards you're going to create with this new capability. If you have something that you can share or you, anything you want to talk about, please mention it in the comments below. Thanks for your time, and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.